Yo, Ash says, and returns to Kalos in the same episode. This could only mean one thing Koga's coming back to me. Yo, what's up everyone? Trayman one here. Welcome back to another Pokemon Journeys anime review, guys. Today we are talking about episode 56. Another Kenon focused episode, guys. This one was a really great one as we got the introduction of Wingstrom and the Castle of Chivalry. And there's a lot to talk about, so let's go ahead and get right into this. For starters, I gotta say, Journeys Year 2 has been doing a really good job with their continuity. Once again, we get an episode that's connected to a previous one. Ash mentions in this episode that they're actually training after this, you know, whole Rinto situation of them losing. Farfetch has been training ever since, working hard, and that they need another place to train. This is where Cerise comes in with Wingstrom's little boot camp that he has at his castle, which I do love that Journeys is actually introducing these characters from the games that haven't really appeared in the anime yet. Like, it brings so many questions of many more characters that could possibly appear later on in the line. And Scyther ends up tagging along as well. And I will admit, at first I was kind of upset. I was like, no, no, go. Let this just be an Ash-focused episode. But after watching this episode, I really liked that it was going Ash. And we also got confirmation that in just four more episodes from now, we will be going back to Wingstrom's castle for another Ash Farfetch development episode. And I think that's strictly going to be Ash and Farfetch. So, you know, it's good that, yeah, Ash and Ghost share the development here, but next time it'll be all Ash and it's building up to what's going to happen next. So I'm really glad how they're handling it. Wingstrom's character is actually really surprising with how he acts and stuff. You know, he looks like this strong, tough dude, but he has shed so many tears throughout the entire episode just because how motivated and passionate he is about battling. So it was nice to see that he had a nice funny side to him as well. And Ash go get here and right off the back, they're the ones that's going to train. And it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where are all the other people? That's the only thing I kind of would wish is that I wish this would have been like an arc. As we know, we've had many arcs in the series like Camp Arcs, X and Y. We had one back in Diamond and Pearl where Ash and the group, they go to this little camp, spend a few days there and do like certain trials and stuff to help their characters develop. I think this would have been a nice arc for Ash Go and other world championship participants to come and stay here for a while and train up. This would have been some great development for Farfetch. And so that they wouldn't have to spread these episodes out like how we had this one and then four episodes later we're coming back here. Like they could just do it all at once. Ash and Go face many interesting trials as well as they have to face against many of Winstrom's Pokemon to try and get through the castle and complete the trial at that bonding with their Pokemon. As we know, Ash and Farfetch, they don't have the best to bond, but this episode really does build on that, on what Rinto said at that. You know, you have to battle together, you have to be one, you can't be one person doing this thing and the Pokemon is doing the other thing. It's also interesting to see the Dene in this episode as well, Ash, one of Ash's trials. I love the fact that freaking the Dene jumped on him and nuzzled him and Ash recognized right off his back. He's like, oh, it's the Dene. Yes, it wasn't Clemence's DNA, but it's still nice to see some recognition of Ash knowing these Pokemon. The moment I really loved the most is when Farfetch was put in some danger and Ash had to come and rescue it. This is where Farfetch and Ash have that moment where Farfetch realizes that its trainer really does care for it and its goal. Where Farfetch is about to fall through this tunnel, Ash comes in and catches it. And, you know, there have been many ways that they could have avoided this. One, Ash could have grabbed Farfetch's leak. Maybe they didn't want to risk it breaking, so I understand that. But, you know, Farfetch could fly, too, so he could have just grabbed the leak and flew up. But Ash instead reaches for his hand and causing the leak to fall. And Ash goes in for a Kalos jump, jumping down the tunnel. I'm like, oh, my goodness, yo, to save the leak. Obviously, you know, he is safe, though, because it's not that deep of a fall. He's able to catch himself. And to all the comments, that was like, Trey, Farfetch can't fly. What are you talking about? We see it fly in this episode, folks. There we go. The final trial was really interesting as Ash, Go, and their Pokemon had to team up and try and steal one of Clef Key's keys. And I do gotta say, this was the best part of this episode. For one, they kinda had Go be the one to you know, go and do other stuff while Ash and Farfetch had the main focus in fighting Wingstrom and his Aegis Slash. But yes, Go did get some nice hits in as well. I really do love to see Scyther use more of his moves to see that it's actually gotten stronger from episode seven when it got one shot at. Like, Oh, it was just so great seeing these Pokemon fight and the animation. The animation was so clean. I was just sitting there like, yo, journeys went all out in this episode. I love seeing Farfetch going with his cool, strong leak moves. And I do believe that it may be landing some critical hits now, which is kind of awesome, leading towards this evolution real soon. But this moment in the heat of battle really showed Farfetch's development as a character. 
As we know originally, Farfetch actually was just with Ash to get stronger as itself. It didn't care for Ash in the World Championships or any of his Pokemon pals. But here we get to see that Farfetch notices Ash is in trouble and ends up taking a hit from Aegislash and blocking Wingstrom's attack to save Ash. So I really do love that they're finally one Pokemon and trainer. We heard Motomoto Seal cool earlier in this episode, so we may be getting Ash Surfetch real soon, guys. I'm just saying, who knows? But nah, nah, I know that's not gonna happen. But still, it was a great moment for these Pokemon. And in the end, Farfetch ends up landing some powerful hits on Aegislash and Sadly, Ash had to stop it, but I think if Farfetch kept going, it would have definitely landed those three critical hits to evolve because, man, that attack was something. And speaking of attacks, Farfetch actually learns a new move, Beam Detect. Now, I think this is really interesting because I made a theory earlier about Ash teaching his Dragonite Dragon Dance after watching Lance, and I had a theory as well that Surfetch was going to learn Iron Defense based off of Leon and the Rayhaus fight. But seeing that it's learned this move right here, may mean that they have been training with Bia, like, you know, some of the Bia stuff. Because Bia's hit my top had focus energy. We see Ash's Farfetch again. It has focus energy. Bia's Grapplot had the tech. Look at Farfetch learning this episode. so did tech. So I feel like Ash is actually taking notes, kind of like Sawyer, on his other opponents and trying to learn these new moves. I think that's really awesome. Or this could have been just a clutch moment at the same time. Who knows? But if Journeys is actually doing that, where Ash is learning from these trainees he's battling and using the moves in his own way, I really love this so much. And I can't wait to see what other moves and strategies he comes up with. And you know how glorious and perfect this episode was. There's one thing that I was kind of upset with, and that's how they handled Saito's evolution. It was kind of rushed in at the end. Like you could tell they didn't have much time to do much, but I do love that they actually did the whole trade with the metal coat to evolve. Like they stuck with the game's logic. Journeys has stuck with the game's logic a lot this series. So I'm loving that they went all the way out showing the way that Scyther evolves in the scissor the proper way. Now, yes, unfortunately, the moment couldn't really be enjoyed because it was just a quick little, oh, trade comes out the Pokeball, it's already a scissor. We didn't get to see the evolution or anything like that. I would have preferred it to be, to be honest, his own episode, maybe or a bigger moment. But at the same time, what could we do? Like I said before, if this was an arc, we could have had an episode mostly focused on Go and the Scizor. Maybe at the start of the episode, they do the whole evolution. Or maybe to be continued where Go calls out the Pokemon. And then we get to see it starting to evolve. But nah, they kind of rushed it. But other than that, it was a great episode. My overall rating for this episode is a 9 out of 10. I love this episode so much, I can't even lie, I was upset at first that Farfetch wasn't going to evolve in this episode, but seeing that, you know, they're coming back here five episodes later, just kind of makes me okay now. It's like, okay, this is just more development for Trainer and Pokemon. In the next time we come back though, I am expecting Farfetch to finally become that Surfetch that he deserves to be. But yeah, everyone, in the comment section down below, let me know what y'all thought of today's episode. I'd love to hear. Our boy Kim, oh, I got some great development. Thank you all for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Trayman1, peace out.